Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be looking at the SUVAT equations. So, so far in uh, the journey through mechanics we've first uh, taken a look at forces and in forces we looked at resolving forces, um, how a force would equate to motion, why that happens. We saw this equation that F uh, is equal to MA which described the relationship between a force and an acceleration. Uh, this was Newton's second law, and now we want to see how would this equation, or how would this link between force and acceleration, actually lead us to be able to describe uh, various different motions, okay? And this is what we're going to look at today. So the SUVAT equations are five equations. In physics, we only actually need to know four, um, but I'm going to give you all five just for um, completeness. Um, in order to describe any kind of linear motion. Now what I mean by linear motion is that it's in one plane. So either it's motion completely horizontal in the x-axis or it's motion completely uh, vertical in the y-axis. Now because it's linear it can go uh, both ways, right? So it could be anywhere along the x-axis or anywhere along the y-axis but it wouldn't be able to go through both at the same time, right? Our equations that we have, I'm going to show you now, aren't uh, advanced enough to actually um, solve for them both uh, simultaneously. So what we will do is we will always separate them into a horizontal component and a vertical component. The exact same way we did it when we were resolving forces, we're going to do the exact same for these equations. So first of all, why do we call them SUVAP? So let me just list here uh, the phrase or the uh, acronym SUVA um, and what it stands for S we've seen before is just the displacement so remember displacement uh, being a vector uh, it is measured in meters it's just a vector distance uh, U is the initial velocity again velocity is a vector measured in meters per second and V is the final velocity also measured in meters per second because it is also a velocity. Uh, A is the acceleration and again another vector uh, and it's measured in meters per second squared and T is time. This one is not a vector uh, and that's measured in seconds. Okay so these are our five variables and as long as we know um, three of these variables we can work out the other two. Okay and we can do that using the SUVAT equations. So let me write them here. So first and most simply, we have V is equal to U plus AT. We could also say V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. We can also say S is equal to U plus V over 2 multiplied by T. We can also say S is UT plus a half AT squared. These are the four that you have to know. All four of these are on your equation sheet. The fifth, uh, the fifth one that is kind of the secret one, uh, unless you're doing a mechanics module in maths, uh, is actually um, that you could also write S is equal to VT minus a half AT squared. Now this one you'll never have to know, okay? But just like I said, just for completeness, we're gonna uh, look at all five of them as the full set of SUVAT equations and you can always use this one uh, if you're having trouble but you shouldn't ever need to um, so you should be able to do it with these. Now why are there five and the reason why there are five is because each equation is missing one of the variables. So if we look at this first SUVAT this is missing the variable S so there's no S in here but it's V, U, A and T so you have all the other ones this second one is missing T, this is missing A, this is missing V, and this is missing U. Okay, so there are five because it has to, each one misses out one of these variables. Okay. Now, these equations are, well, appear um, to be, or they look more complicated than many of the equations that we've seen so far, but they're really straightforward. Um, what I'm going to do now is show you how we would use these equations. Okay, so um, I recommend that you write these down uh, on the side 
or just pause the video, get a piece of paper, try and just write these down um, because I, I'm not gonna keep scrolling back up. I'm just gonna tell you which one I'm gonna use. Um, so um, if you wanna write these down so you can follow along, that'll be fine, okay? So like I said, in this video, in this video, we're gonna take only linear motion. So let's have an example of uh, a simple uh, vertical motion, okay? So let's take an example of some uh, simple vertical motion. Okay, so let me set up a scenario. Let me say that I have a building that is uh, 50, foot, 50 meters tall. So it's a very tall building. Um, and I'm gonna drop a coin. Um, and this coin, I'm gonna drop it uh, very delicately so that it is initially, so its initial velocity u is zero meters per second. So the way they will usually tell you in the question that it's initially u is if they use the frame, the phrase uh, dropped, that means the, your initial speed is, is u, is, is zero. Um, they also use the phrase at rest. That would also tell you that your initial speed is zero. Okay, so if you see any of these phrases, either um, that something was dropped or something starts at rest, it tells you your initial velocity. Okay, so this is, this is my uh, coin here, and I'm gonna drop it with an initial speed u. Now, this could be all they're asking, and they might tell you, given this, how would you work out um, the time taken? Okay, so let me, I said if we were given three pieces of information, we could work out the other two. And there is a hidden bit of information in this. Um, so the part A, what we're gonna work out is the time, and part uh, B is what is the final velocity just before it hits the ground. Okay. Okay, now the first thing to do in any situation where you have any kind of SUVAT um, is to list the SUVAT variables, okay? And make a, um, a good list of what you know. And the same as we did when we had the forces, we need to define a direction. Since these four up here are all vectors, we need to define a direction to be a positive, um, uh, a positive direction. Because I know everything is gonna point downwards because it's just vertically falling down, I'm gonna say that my downward direction is the positive direction, okay? That means that if I drop it from 50 meters high, my displacement is gonna be 50 meters in the positive direction. My initial velocity is zero meters per second. My final velocity is what I'm gonna work out in part B. My acceleration, see this is the, the, the hidden one. Whenever you have vertical um, motion, this is just falling and accelerating due to gravity. So my acceleration is 9.81 meters per second. This is a constant for the gravitation acceleration. Okay, and T is what we're gonna find out in part A. So I'm gonna say for now, let's say T is uh, this question mark. Okay, I have S, U, A, and T. So if you now wanna look at the, the SUVAT equations, you'll find that if you have S, U, A, and T, you will relate them, so this is answer to part A, as S is equal to U, T, plus a half at squared. Okay, this is the equation, because the only thing we don't have is v, so we look for the equation that's missing v, and we're just gonna use that in order to go ahead um, and solve for t. Now, what you'll see here is that t is actually quadratic in this case. I could easily rearrange this to make it a quadratic formula, and that is why you're also given the quadratic equation on your um, data sheet. So a good thing to make sure you can do is solve any kind of um, quadratic using the, the quadratic formula, because it can sometimes happen uh, that you will have to solve for uh, quadratics. This case, because this is just an example and I'm trying to simplify things, I've specifically um, picked u to be equal to zero so that this whole term will become zero. And if this whole term is zero, it means that it's just t squared. Okay, so now substituting everything in, um, although actually what I wanna do first 
is rearrange for T, really. Um, I'm gonna substitute this in first just to make my rearranging easier. So it's gonna become half a t squared. Then I'm gonna rearrange it. And if I rearrange it, I end up with t squared is equal to two s over a. So t is therefore equal to the square root of two s over a. That means that t is equal to the square root of two times 50, which is 100 divided by 9.81, which is 3.19 seconds. Okay, so we have, uh, if we drop a coin uh, from a 50 meter building, assuming that there is no air resistance whatsoever, and there are no frictional forces or anything acting on it, um, it will fall and hit the ground in 3.19 seconds, okay? Um, for the quadratic um, examples here, so let me just put a, a side note here. Uh, for when you have to solve quadratics, you will always end up with two answers. Okay, that's the whole uh, reason we have quadratics is because the quadratics have two roots, um, usually. Um, but for quadratics, when you get two answers, you will always have a positive answer and a negative answer. Okay always choose the positive answer, okay? There's a reason why the negative answer is there, um, and it's basically because these equations don't, um, could, they will work anywhere, right? So they would work if they were in um, space, they work if they are on Earth, on Jupiter, they always work, and they don't take into account any physical restraints, okay? So they don't, um, they don't obey the law of a direction of time. So we know that time obviously travels only in one direction, but these equations um, will basically tell you any time that it has been in that position, okay? So you might find, for example, um, that you could have a arc like this, and what you'd be finding if, like I said, this would be projectile motion. So if you just looked vertically, let's instead say that you throw a ball up and then it falls back down again. It will be in this position at two places and you'll find that will be when t equals zero and when t equals some t naught time. You obviously are gonna choose t equals t naught, okay? Because you know initially it was there, hence why you get an answer being t equals zero. And you also get a second answer which is t equals t naught, okay? So whenever you do the quadratics, always make sure you're choosing a sensible answer that actually makes physical sense. Okay, so that was just a side note for that uh, equation. Now, let me get rid of this for a second. And if we wanted to then solve part B, we can do something very similar. Um, but this time, we wanna know what V is. And we don't know T. I would always recommend, if you're gonna do part, uh, questions like this where they have multiple parts, um, try to avoid using your answers to previous questions. If it's not possible to avoid it, and that's the only way you can see, by all means, go ahead and do it. But I would say, um, just to save uh, yourself from slipping up, say you make a mistake in one, you'll get error carried forward marks, but it's probably just easier uh, for the examiner if you just try and do it without using your answer to previous questions, just so you're a little bit more accurate. So in this case, we can calculate V without knowing what T is. So we have uh, S, U, V, and A. So we can use the equation uh, V squared equals U squared plus 2A, S, 2A, S. So that means this is the only equation that doesn't have T in it, so we can use this. Again, U is equal to zero, and we want V. So V is just equal to the square root of 2A, S, which is the square root of two times 9.81 times 50, which is equal to 31.3 meters per second. Okay, so that means that the um, velocity at the instant um, before it hits the ground will be traveling uh, or will be 31.3 uh, meters per second. Now you might think, okay, what happens if it hits the ground? It's obviously gonna decrease velocity because it's gonna come to a stop. Imagine a beanbag falling from 50 meters, it would then just hit the ground and 
come to a stop, so surely its final velocity should be zero. But remember, these equations don't know the physical constraints of that. They are not aware that there's a barrier in the way. So you have to always, the reason they tell you to calculate the velocity at the instant that it hits is because your equation doesn't account for the fact that there's a wall in the way or there's a flaw there. So they don't know. Let me do one more example of a horizontal motion and then um, I will leave you to do some practice questions. So horizontal motion. Let's imagine we have a road just like this and let's say we have a, uh, let's go with a car, okay? Now I can't draw, so this is my car. Um, and this car has a mass of uh, m, okay? It's arbitrary if we choose a mass or not because there's no mass in the Suva equations. Let's say it's gonna go through a drag race and it's gonna travel a distance here of um, 100 meters, okay? Imagine it's a go kart, for example, okay? Um, if it's in a drag race, we know its initial velocity is zero meters per second. That's just by, by logic, I guess. Um, let's assume we know that it, the car completes the drag race at a time t equals uh, something fairly reasonable, 12 seconds, okay? And let's then say we want to know um, what is the acceleration or what is the average acceleration. So we're going to say part A is to look for the average acceleration. And part B is going to look for the final velocity as it crosses the line. Okay. Now there's a reason I've said average here, because um, another thing that we have to note about these suvats is the first thing they don't take into account any um, constraints of the physical world. The second thing is that they have to be applied under constant acceleration, okay? Has to be constant acceleration. As soon as you have a varying acceleration, the equations don't work anymore, okay? So only apply the SUVAT equations to situations where you know there is a constant acceleration. Okay, so in this case, we've calculated an average acceleration because that's assuming that it's accelerating at the same rate uh, for the whole thing. Okay, so again, we need to define a positive direction. Now, uh, kind of an obvious choice would be to do it in this direction. That direction is going to be positive. And we need to list all of the SUVATs. I'm just going to encompass that into the list. Okay, so we know t is 12, a is what we're trying to work out, v is what we're trying to work out, we know u is 0 meters per second, and we know s is 100. Okay, the first part is to work out the acceleration. So we're missing uh, v, so s, u, a, and t. We're going to say for part a, uh, s is equal to u, t plus a half a, t squared. Uh, the only one without v in it, then we know u is equal to zero. You'll find this is a common simplification. So if we're trying to solve for a, um, we can make this into s equals half a t squared. Then a is equal to 2s over t squared. And therefore, the acceleration is just 2 times 100 divided by 12 squared, which is just 200 over 144, which is about uh, about 1.4 seconds meters per second squared even this is an acceleration there we go okay now the final velocity if we now say that we want to know that instead and we don't know a so we have s u uh, v and t so we would say for part b s equals u plus v over 2 times t uh, and if we're trying to work out um, v in this case, we can rearrange this because u is equal to zero, so we can make it v is just equal to 2s over t, which is very similar to this, this one up here as well. Um, 
and if uh, this is 2s over t, this just becomes uh, 200 divided by 12, which is about 16.7 meters per second. Okay. Now this is uh, the suvats. I would say go away and look for questions, make up questions. Um, I made this up on the spot. I would say just make up something, give yourself three variables, ask yourself to work out the, third, the, the other two. Uh, it will give you practice working out um, things and also being able to recognize certain situations. Hopefully this will make sense and thank you for watching.